I mentioned in the last video how you can actually use file-based SSIS to do version control. And I wanted to actually walk you through the full-blown steps to do it. I actually have not downloaded any of the pieces here, so I'm going to have to go up uh, and download these. Um, what you're going to have to do, there's really going to be three things at play here. Let me uh, get you what you need to know. So there's, uh, okay, let me, let me also say I'm going to show you one particular type that I find easy. Is it the only one? No. Is it the best one? Probably not. I find it easy to use with SSIS and it's probably the most popular. So the three players that we need are Tortoise SVN, which is our subversion client. So we're going to install subversion. And we need a Visual SVN Server, which installs our VSN server for us. Our SVN, it installs Apache. It, in, it, it is very easy. And then you're going to need the Visual SVN client which is the Visual Studio plugin. Now this is uh, going to cost you. Okay, so that actually costs money. The other two are free. Okay, when I say it costs money, I think it's not an expensive option. Certainly not uh, once you see what it will do for you and how much productivity it allows you. Uh, so it's a trivial cost to me. So three players, Tortoise SVN, Visual SVN server and Visual SVN client. So I'm going to just go download them and we're going to install them. Um, uh, gosh, I can't remember. Tortoise uh, SVN download. There you go. There's, they're right there. So you can see it. I mean, I just go into Google. Uh, I'm going to go to download. Literally, I have not uh, done this here. Um, so I'm going to download the 32 bit. Obviously, you'll need to download whichever one you need to, and uh, I want to do the direct link, and so we'll download that one, and then we'll go to Visual SVN, and thank you, Google. So here you go, VisualSVN.com, and you can see the differences, Visual SVN or Visual SVN server. You're going to have to have them both, so... Go download Visual SVN server. It is free. And go back and download Visual SVN. At the time of this, uh, let's just see what the purchase price is. I think it was $50 so previous. Yeah, $49. Okay. So those are going to download. Looks like uh, they're almost all complete. So um, while they are doing that, let me go to my downloads. I'm going to go ahead and close the Visual Studio, and I'm going to have to do a reboot during all of this. So let me just start with Tortoise. I hope that's not the one that's finished. Um, actually, it is. There we go. They're all finished. So I'm going to go ahead and install Tortoise. And just say install. I mean, literally for all three of these, I'm going to go with the default installation. We'll do an evaluation copy of Visual SVN client. And that's really it. So that's it. Notice that I do have to restart. So I'm going to go ahead and tell it to restart. And I'll transition to a restarted one. Okay, we're on the other side of a reboot now. So I have SVN installed. However, for those of you that are just first getting into what is subversion, what is SVN, what is source code control, um, it's not really something you're going to go to Tortoise and say, help me out. So if I go to Tortoise SVN and I launch it, it kind of says, hey, you must be new. <laughs> you don't know what to do. So really what Tortoise is, is a shell extension. And so when I right click on something, I can see Tortoise and I can see what I want to work with and whether I need a repository or if I need to check something in or out or update. So really before I want to go deeper, I want to install Visual SVN. So I'm going to go to my downloads and I'm going to install the server. Once that's complete, then we'll install the client. So it won't take it too long. Respond to the EULA. 
Uh, it is going to install a web server. Uh, so we uh, have our port. Uh, we can go ahead and install that. Let that complete. It's a very trivial install. You do not have to use Visual SVN Server. However, if you want to make life easy, then that's what you'll use. Uh, then the last bit here will be to install Visual SVN. So this is the Visual Studio client add-in. And this is the one that you have to pay for. So you notice that you have the Visual Studio. Uh, choose the ones, you know, I don't need 2005, 2010. Uh, but I say install. Again, very easy. Nothing really to it. And we're ready to go. So now, let me close out of this. Let my close out of this. We'll wait. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. And I've finished. Okay. Now, again, not a whole lot we're going to need to do over in the start menu. We can launch the server manager. Infrequently, you will need to go to your uh, server manager and you'll need to do some manipulation of the repositories or if you're dealing in a multi-user situation, you're going to be using it to set up your security, what usernames and passwords people use, what groups and permissions that they have. Okay. Right now, we don't really have anything, so I'm just going to leave this blank. So I'm going to go back to Visual Studio now. And now we have a new drop-down, Visual SVN. And you can see now that I want to integrate now with Subversion. So if I had a solution that was already in Subversion, then I would use this. However, I want to open my recent projects. So this was one of the SSIS projects that we did earlier in this chapter. We have the Solution Explorer. You can see it checked in here. Now, Visual SVN add solution to subversion. When I do that, it's going to create the root. I'm going to make a new repository and I'll just call it chapter 3 because that's the name of my solution. And so it creates that. And now you see a couple of things. Let's go to the Visual SVN Server Manager. And you can see that we now have chapter 3. And we can see here under our brand, well, we're not seeing anything. We haven't really checked anything in just yet. Um, you see over here the icons here that are kind of, what is that, goldish? Okay. It needs to be checked in. You see down in the very bottom part right here that this icon is kind of gold. That's showing me I have items that need to be checked in or updated. And I can go to Visual SVN and I can commit my changes. So when I commit this, this is actually going to write this to the trunk. Okay, You can see where in the repository that it will write. And like a good developer, I write a message that explains my check-in. This is the first check-in. And I say OK. And it has now added all of these and now have updated my revision number to number two. Okay. And you can see green now. So you see the little icons are all green for the whole solution. Okay. There's nothing that's been modified. And if we go to the Visual SVN Server Manager and we browse now down into the trunk, you can see all of the files that are listed here. Okay. So they've been checked in. Now, when I come out, let me close all of these out. And we're going to bring out video two. And I'm going to double click on it. Okay, I am looking at the version of video two that uh, was, as you can last see, checked in. Now I can make a change to this and I'll add an annotation. Hi, everybody. Okay, and I'll save it. Now notice a couple of things. One, I've got the little asterisk showing that I have an unsaved change. Two, my icons have now changed. I can now go to Visual SVN and I can commit this change. So I have checked it out. Now I am going to check it back in. I added uh, an annotation.
you can see that it's only dealing with that single one awesome very cool and now it's updated everything is now at revision 3 so I'm gonna make a couple of changes to a few of these so I'm gonna check out package 1 I'm going to add an annotation Hi there. Uh, and I'll check that one in so added annotation and that goes to revision four. You can see it's automatically keeping that revision. Well, now if I realize, you know what? Oops, I messed up. Can you show me the differences between things? Or I can go to Visual SVN and I can look at my repo browser. The repo browser is your repository browser. And I can actually see in the trunk for this particular project which revisions that each file was last modified in. So you can see this one was from version 3, this is version 4. And we can actually say, okay, well, you know what I want to do? I want you to show me a log of the changes for this particular package. And I can see, okay, there you go. That was the first check-in. That's where we added the annotation. And you know what? I can say, okay, fine. I actually want to uh, do this. We could create a branch. We could add tags to this. Uh, we can compare. We can open this one, and so you can actually open that and take a look at the old versions of it. So version control can easily be done with products that are free, like SVN. And if you want to pay a $50 fee, you can easily integrate Visual SVN into your Visual Studio. It's not required. We could drop down to the command line and issue SVN commands and have all of the same things happen. We can check things out via the internet if we need to. Some tools like Visual SVN just make things a little bit easier. Now, before we go on, I'm actually going to uninstall version control because it will maybe confuse people that didn't watch this video. But I hope that you get how easy it can be to do version control.